So we've already studied what is Hispanic Heritage Month. We've seen examples from artwork and culture from all around those different countries. We have um, spoken about Mexico and learned about some things about Mexico and their heritage and customs and food and, and some artwork. And we have heard a story from my Cuban friend, Miss Lanzas, who is a um, media specialist. And so we learned about life on an island. And she said that even though it was about the Dominican Republic, it was actually very much like her island of Cuba. So now we're going to make some art. We're going to learn about Amate bark paintings, and then we're going to make our own version. Our champ's expectations for this part of the lesson. Conversation level, please stay at a level one and be respectful of those working around you. For your help, remember you can ask me or a family member, but you can also breathe. Take your time, pause the video if you need. Our activity today, we're gonna to be doing some drawing and some painting if you have paints. If not, you'll be coloring. Move to get your supplies. That's your movement, M. P, participation, please participate in everything. The stories, the videos, the expl explanations of the artwork so that you can have your very best art piece. And if we do all of those things, we'll be successful. So let's go to our next step. Before we get started making our Mate Bark painting, I wanted to show you some examples from authentic Amate bark paintings. These are actually painted on pieces of bark from trees and they are from Puebla, Mexico. So all of these images you are about to see are from the Mexican Museum. So here is our map of Mexico and if you can see there is Puebla and that is where the Amate bark paintings originated. That means that they first came from there. Um, so Puebla is east of Mexico City and you can see it. It's like a pink, a pink state. So they're originally made in, in Puebla. Now they are generally made in Guerrero. So just kind of south into the West. All right, so let's look at this one. So as we are looking at these Amate bark paintings, I want you to look at the bright colors, the use of lines. Um, older students, I want you to look for symmetry and um, pattern. And I also want um, everyone to look at the use of the thick black outline. Look at the animals in the paintings and the way that nature is used. So you really can see a lot of lines whenever they use birds. If you want to look at any of these further, feel free to stop and pause. Wow, look at that pattern. So a lot of movement with the lines. Here's one that is not focusing on people. I mean on, excuse me, on animals so much as people. So this is depicting a scene from everyday life. So that's something else you can draw. I um, assigned you the animal to like draw an animal. But if you feel very led to do a scene, you may. Just make sure you don't draw too much that you can't finish your artwork. I like how the sun is, is created in this one. So Amate paper is made from um, the bark of fig and mulberry trees. And so to make paper, you take pieces of wood and you chop them up and, into very, very tiny pieces and you add water and some other things to make them stick back together and then you press it out flat. So that's how they made this bark paper. Okay, so 
let's see one more. So yeah, I'm not sure how many more we have. Wow, got the colors in that one. Got the cacti, cactus plant in the top corner. Okay, so what you're going to need, you are going to need a brown paper bag, a pair of scissors. You can use black watercolor or a black crayon. I will show you what to do. If you're using watercolors, you need water and a paintbrush and um, crayons. You can use a pencil too if you like. And I'm, I'm going to show you how to make this, okay? You need a brown paper bag. You can have a big one or a smaller lunch sack. I'm gonna use a smaller lunch sack. Brown paper bag, you need crayons, you need scissors, a pencil, and if you have watercolor paints and you would like to use those, you can use those as well. You can also color with marker if you prefer. I'm gonna let you guys pause the video and go get your supplies. Press play when you have your supplies ready. Now it's time to make a work of heart. So a work of heart is an artwork where we are putting our feelings and um, what we think is valuable into our art. So once you have your supplies ready, you're gonna take your bag and you wanna cut off the bottom part. So that might make a good table trash can. And then you wanna cut it again so that you have a good space to work on. You don't wanna cut it too small. So that's a little big. Oops, so I'm gonna trim mine again. Okay, once you have your paper, trimmed like this, you're ready for the next step. If you need to pause to get caught up with me, do that right now. Okay, now we're gonna get our paper ready to make it look like a mate bark. We're gonna crumple it up into a ball. Carefully open it so you don't tear it. And if you find some areas that aren't crumpled enough, crumple them again. Open it back up and smooth it out with your hands. Try not to rip it. Now we're ready to add our animal or our scene of everyday life. If you have watercolor paints, I'm gonna show you how you can um, put a little bit of black on here to make it look like the bark. But if you do not, or you don't wanna wait on your paper to dry, I want you to get out a black crayon. And you can, if you have one that doesn't have any paper on it and you can lazy color, that would be good. You're gonna lightly, lightly color over some of your paper to kind of get it, give it a little bit of some black marks on there, but I'm gonna show you how to do that. Don't add too much if you use crayon um, with the watercolors. Remember that black is the last one on here. It is um, really strong, so we don't need very much of it. And what I learned from my first example of trying this was to get the paper wet. This will go, this will make it go really fast. So if you'll just get your paper wet, but not too wet, it's not like you dunked it in the swimming pool. And you know, it's that super wet. Get it a little bit wet, wake up your paints. So I'm not digging, I'm just adding a little bit of water to wake up my paints. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit. I'm afraid I have to, there we go. I'm just gonna add a little bit of that black on here to get into the cracks. 
okay? So now I want you to think about what kind of animal or um, scene from everyday life you can put on your Amate painting. So um, I don't think I've ever told you guys this, but my grandmother on my mother's side, the one that came from Sicily, that's the little island um, beside the boot of Italy. So my grandmother on my mom's side, she used to have parakeets and um, I just thought they were the most fascinating birds and they would talk to us, you know, and repeat things that we were saying. They drove my mother crazy, but I thought it was hilarious because, you know, that's, that's the way it goes, right? So I drew a parakeet on mine. So I want you to think about what you want on yours. I want you to remember what you saw in the Amate examples. I want you to remember the, the scenes of the people, the way the sun was drawn, if you want to add that. Um, remember, suns are not in the corner, okay? Um, if you want to uh, draw your favorite animal and you get to choose, I'm, it, you don't even have to explain to me why you chose your animal, but it does need to have a, um, a special meaning to you. So I explained why I did the parakeet. So you want to draw that. You can draw it in pencil first. You might not be able to see it well. Drawing in white crayon is helpful to, um, to really be able to see it really good. So I'm going to let you pause the video to get caught up to me and then press play when you're ready. Once you've drawn everything you wanted, um, you've added some lines and details, you can add a border if you like, you can begin coloring. If you would like to use the watercolors, you may. Um, it will really make this very wet, so be careful not to over wet it. I'm going to use crayons just because I can lay down a really good color um, quickly. You could use markers if you also would like, but they may be dark. I'm not sure, but I'm going to use crayons. So go ahead and color, and um, you can watch me finish coloring mine. I'm going to go in super fast motion, and then when you're finished, when I'm finished, um, make sure you pause the video so that you can color. Once you finish coloring, now you're going to take your black crayon and you're going to add some details and some um, really thick black, black, black outlines. Now here is where, as the artist, you get to make a decision. You can decide when you are finished or not. So on this one, I really like the way that the, the white contrasts well, it will contrast with the black, so let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to take this black crayon, and I could go right on top of the white and cover it up, which is what some of the Amante paintings look like, but I'm going to add a thick black outline on the outside of the white so it will have a contrast. So remember, contrast is when um, something really stands out. It really makes it pop. So I'm going to add this black outline, kind of like a coloring book. And you would do that to your entire artwork. So let me show you what it looks like if you do the whole thing in black. So I did this one earlier. So if you cover the whole thing in black and you cover on top of the white lines, 
that's what it can potentially look like. If you like the way that the white looks or you want to add some black and, um, and some white, you can do that. I'm going to actually do mine on the inside of this wing. But just remember, whatever kind of outline you use, whether it's black or whether it's white or whether it's a color, make sure that it's really thick. Go back over it, make it very thick. So not a skinny line. So let me show you what I mean. If I just draw one time, if I just draw a skinny line, see that? It almost gets lost. So you wanna really make it stand out. Okay. And so you can add the different lines, outlines that you would like don't forget to sign your name when you're finished. So your name goes at the bottom. I've been adding the year, so let me do that. And let's go ahead and pause our video so that we can all get our outlines completed. So when you are completely finished and you feel like um, you've added all of the details that you want to, make sure that you upload this to Canvas so that you can get credit for your assignment. So you will go into the assignment, you need to take a picture like a with your um, family's phone or computer or somehow take a, a photograph of this, upload it onto your Canvas. If that is problematic, talk to your teacher and we can find a way to um, get that uploaded onto there. And once you've submitted that, then you have completed this entire unit. And with this project, we, um, we were answering, continuing to answer that EQ, that essential question, how can we understand the parts of art, global, societal, historical, cultural. And with this project, we can say, I can exemplify visual arts representing the heritage, customs, and traditions of various cultures. And in this particular project, we have been showing, exemplifying our art, showing the heritage and customs of the Mexican people for Hispanic Heritage Month. Good job. Don't forget to submit it so you can get feedback.